Buster by Denise Fleming. For Worfie, the best dog ever. This is the title page. Buster. Buster was a happy dog. He had everything he could ever want. He had dishes with his name painted on them in curvy letters, a large grassy yard with a tall oak tree to nap under, a sand pit for taking dirt baths, an in and out flap on the back door, a basket full of toys, a radio tuned to his favorite station, and brown shoes who took Buster to the park whenever Buster asked. Buster was a happy dog until Brown Shoes brought home the big box. The big box. Buster stared at the big box. He hoped there were juicy steaks or fancy French cheeses or spicy sausages in the big box. But there were no steaks no cheeses, no sausages in the box. There was just a bag of sand, a large flat pan, two small dishes, and a cat named Betty. Buster was not happy. Buster was afraid of cats. Betty. Betty jumped down off the table. She began to purr and twist and turn around Buster's legs. Buster was terrified. He was afraid to move. If I ignore her, thought Buster, maybe she'll go away. Betty did everything to attract Buster's attention. She slept in Buster's dishes with the curvy letters. Buster ignored her. She ran up and down and around Buster's tree. Buster ignored her. She dug in Buster's sand pit. Buster ignored her. She ran in and out and in and out the in and out flap. Buster ignored her. She hid Buster's toys. Buster ignored her. Then she changed the station on Buster's radio. That was too much for Buster. A fine park. Buster slipped under the fence. He ran down the block, over five streets, and around two corners until he came to a park. Not his usual park, but a fine park with tall trees, a bubbling fountain, tubs of flowers, large grassy patches, and not a cat in sight. No, Betty, thought Buster as he drank from the fountain. No, Betty, thought Buster as he rolled in the sand. No, Betty, thought Buster as he listened to his favorite radio station. No, Betty, thought Buster, as he fell asleep in the shade of a tall tree. Lost. Buster woke up. He was hungry. He was lonely. Soon it would be dark. Buster was ready to go home. He looked up the street. He looked down the street. Nothing looked familiar. Buster circled the park to the left. He circled the park to the right. Buster had no idea which direction was home. Buster was lost. Buster asked the big yellow dog if he knew which way was home. He asked the tiny black dog if she knew which way was home. He asked the man sweeping the walks if he knew which way was home. No one in the park had any idea where Buster lived. Buster sat very still and tried to remember the route he'd taken to the park. But he'd been so busy trying to get away from Betty 
that he hadn't paid any attention. Home. All Buster could think about was how he would never see his home, his dishes, his sand pit, his toys, his tree, or brown shoes again. What would he do? Where would he go? Just then, a pigeon circled Buster. It landed close to Buster's ear. Coo ka coo, said the pigeon, looking up. Buster looked up way up. In the top of a tall tree several streets over, Buster saw a waving ball of white fur. The tree looked very familiar. The waving ball of fur looked very familiar. It was Betty. Buster ran out of the park, around two corners, over five streets, turned left, and ran up the block all the time keeping an eye on Betty. Buster slipped under the fence. Betty ran down the tree and over to Buster. Betty began to purr and twist and turn around Buster's legs. Buster was a happy dog. He had everything he could ever want and more. The...